The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. You can right, use Tor to Axard Wizard Swap, by the way. You can. Wizard Swap. You W's can. in the chat for Wizard Swap. Love Wizard Swap. They're the best. Uh, all right. So Tony could not make it. So I'm going to be running the news. So forgive me. Oh, no shit. Okay. Bring up these links. Thank you so much, Tux. All right. So first up, which is what was discussed a little bit earlier. Um, was that Kraken is delisting XMR within Europe. Very bad news today from Kraken. I guess P2P is the only way to go from now on. We'll install Havino ASAP and try it out. Yeah, Kraken uh, had an announcement that October 31st, they'll be halting trading and deposits of all XMR um, pairs. And it looks like you'll have until December to withdraw that from the Kraken platform. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm expecting it to go a lot better than Binance did uh, and not be like a, a fake sell-off like what happened with Binance delisted Monero in Europe. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully it doesn't um, cause too much of an issue. Next up, uh, IRS is cracking down hard next year. The IRS can trace Bitcoin mixer transactions. Many will get big tax bills soon. Do you really think privacy run won't happen? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I am looking at here. I think this is some sort of search result of somebody looking up IRS traced Bitcoin mixer transactions. So this is uh, slightly low quality, but if I can find this, uh, if I if someone if someone has this actual article of whatever it is being pulled from here, uh, please link that and I'll go ahead and show that. Uh, that would be interesting to know if uh, the IRS is now. Is I mean it's it's unsurprising like Bitcoin mixing is not as not as strong as Monero. Just using something like Monero as cash, but uh, that'd be interesting to know if they are tracing effect you know, easily tracing mixed transactions. Uh, Chainalysis CEO, AI agents could be policing all crypto TXs within five years. And here we have an actual article from Cointelegraph. Uh, Chainalysis CEO Michael Groninger believes it's not much further away before governments use AI agents to catch on-chain crypto wrongdoers. Government prosecutors and taxation authorities will use artificial intelligence to scan the blockchain and solve crime within the next five years according to the CEO of Chainalysis, or Chainalysis. Uh, it's not much further away, said Chainalysis CEO Michael Groninger. When Cointelegraph asked, asked whether generative AI agents could sift through the blockchain for governments within three to five years. In some years from now, crypto would be more or less the only way you would want to solve crime because it's far more scalable. It's far easier. It's far transparent. It's very transparent. You can do it internationally, and you can see a lot more insights. Uh, so this is just speaking to how Bitcoin is like a haven uh, for it's like it's like gold for these uh, intelligence agencies and anybody trying to sniff out people's transaction data. Uh, it makes it so much easier. You don't have to go through all this legal framework of, you know, doing subpoenas or getting approval or whatever you can just you can just look at it it's public right uh and internationally you don't have to be necessarily involved with other governments because it's a, it's public it's there you don't have to do anything right you don't have to uh try to subpoena some foreign bank or whatever to get transaction details from someone's account it's just it's all there so uh, ai will definitely make this easier in the future uh warranting a further use of privacy coins um it's good to see that Monero is going to get ahead of the curb uh, in the coming year to help uh, reduce this possibility even further. But even using Monero right now is still uh, infinitely better than using Bitcoin. Uh, just pulling up the next one here. Hopefully it'll load and not give me any issues. All right, we have 
a tweet about Donald Trump's on crypto. Uh, Monero Maverick says, this is a rug. He's going to crash it, then regulate crypto to the ground. Who can survive? So this is Donald Trump's tweet. I think this is from, this is from like 2016. Um, this is from quite a long time ago. Uh, he used this. This is the opinion he used to held, and it might still be his actual opinion now. Who knows? He says, I am not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. And you compare that to now, where he said, I promise to make America great again. This time, the crypto at World Liberty FI is playing to help make uh, America the crypto capital of the world. The white, the white list for eligible persons is officially open. This is your chance to be part of the historic moment. Join blah, 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 whatever, worldlimityfinancial.com. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it, I think it's just, he's he's forced to get on this for uh, the voter base because people like care about this a lot more than they did before. I don't know if he actually, I would tend to agree that he probably doesn't care about Bitcoin or crypto that much. Um, it's more of just a, a ploy to, to to appease to the voter base, which he has to do because it's it's a big it's such a big thing now. Uh, um, he's gonna crash it the regular crypto to the ground. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. He said some good things about crypto um, in terms of like having you know the right to self custody and basically touching the market less. Uh, but if you go and look back at back at previous things he said like this doesn't paint a pretty picture for sure uh so we'll see how much of this is actually truth how much of it's just you know blatant lies uh we'll see how that plays out of course and uh moving on we've got this uh, another reddit post here monero is about the scariest coin out there today if you look at torn i don't even know what torn is it was at 40 before the government outlawed it now at two dollars fifty cents anyone's wallet interacting with it will be prosecuted what if they do the same to xmr it could go to 20 another thing i keep hearing how someone has cracked the code to see transactions in xmr uh yeah this is more of like a question um which i, I believe this has probably been uh challenged in the comments here Like by here's a comment by Monero Bull responding to this. Uh, Monero dipped to 97 euros when it was delisted for Binance. Now at 138. Uh, Monero uses quite basic cryptography. What you hear about is people who get busted despite using Monero. Uh, what those articles, as people that have mentioned, is how exactly the bust actually happened. And it's never going through tracing Monero directly. Uh, Bitfinex hack they use Monero, but also used Bitcoin tied to KYC sexes to get them busted. Nordic healthcare hacker used Monero, but also upload his entire home directory. In case you guys don't remember that one, he uploaded his entire home directory, which included personal info to the the leak dumps on on the dark web, which is very hilarious. Uh, incognito market Sparrow, while signed in, googled about what uh, to do when your server is offline. While the feds were currently in the middle of copying the service data, which is why it was down. Yeah, this is this is the case with all these. Uh, this is this is the same thing with all these cases of people getting arrested that has some relation to Monero, but it's almost never. Well, it's never through tracing Monero directly. It's always through something external. Uh, and there's things that Monero can be improved on, of course. But the whole point being is that well, none of these people were actually found directly through tracing Monero. It's something entirely external, not even related to it most of the time. So. Yeah, that being said, just be smart uh, and, you know, also be smart with how you use your Monero, but, you know, don't do stupid stuff like upload your home directory to a darknet dump. Yeah. All right, coming up next, we've got Fluffy on the Monero delisting from Kraken. So this is a tweet here from Fluffy Pony. Cracking listing Monero in Europe just goes to prove what we already know. Chainalysis simply can't squeeze enough information out of Monero's privacy to be meaningful. Otherwise, regulators will want Monero to stay listed as a honeypot. Uh, this is an interesting take, and uh, I think there's probably some truth to it. At this point, it's clear that Monero is is not compromised, has been compromised. And as we've seen with the recent chain analysis video leaks is that they really can't trace they really can't do much to trace it so the only thing left to do is to deter as many people uh from finding out about it so removing it from all these main centralized exchanges 
Uh, I doubt they're going to do much to get in the way of people who are already using it, but what they can do is try to uh, prevent people from finding out about it or seeing that it exists. Uh, so removing it from these exchanges is, uh, you know, one of the ways that people learn about crypto is just, you know, seeing what's available on Kraken or Binance. Uh, and that's going to prevent people from being able to buy a, a ton at one time. So if Kraken, Kraken is one of the last places that will major centralized exchanges that sells Monero, let you buy and trade with Monero. So that'll definitely be a blow to uh, the ability to quickly get accumulate a lot of Monero. Like you want to just buy 20 grand of Amero, Monero uh, like that. You can do that on Kraken. Uh, now you, you can't really do that on, uh, let's say maybe Trade Ogre. Like the, the liquidity on something like Trade Ogre is probably too little to acquire a ton of XMR like that. Uh, you could still use Trade Ogre, but you can't buy it directly for fiat. You have to use another currency anyway. Um, you'll still be able to swap to XMR on a lot of a lot of swap services that exist. Um, you should you'll be able to do that with a cake wallet still. So what a lot of people do is buy Bitcoin or Litecoin, then swap to XMR. You can still do that. But you you won't be able to buy XMR directly. Um, and that is for European customers. You can still buy XMR via Kraken in the United States if you want to um, for the future until they inevitably delist it as well. So this one is uh, quite unfortunate. This is very sad. Uh, Rhino Wallet is shutting down. Uh, so they are closing at the end of October. See if this page will actually uh, load here. Doesn't seem to want to. Come on. Okay, my internet's being stupid. <laughs> Give me two seconds, guys. Or maybe it's Reddit. Maybe Reddit's down. It's very slow. All right, forget this. I'm going to use my... Uh... I'm going to use my own Reddit proxy. All right, so uh, here's the post from Rhino Wallet. Rhino Wallet closing down end of, end of October. Hello, everyone. It is with a heavy heart that we announce the upcoming winding down of Rhino. A few years ago, we realized Monero was missing critical bits of professional tooling for teams, be it companies, NGOs, or fluid groups of individuals. One missing tool we identified was a wallet software that allows multiple users to deal with shared funds in a secure way. Professional principles such as splitting roles among transaction preparers and approvers Hierarchical transaction limits within an organization, etc., were not just available for every other large blockchain project. They were the de facto standard used in the industry. And so we embarked on a mission to offer similar tooling for Monero, aiming to boost its adoption by the industry at large. Oh, sorry, I didn't share the screen. There we go. Uh, this was and remains a worthy and exciting goal, especially as the Monero project is too often delisted or unsupported, often out of regulatory concerns, but also because the usual tools expected by the industry were so largely absent. While we attempted to monetize the platform by paying businesses, we've also always offered the free version of Rhino so the community benefit from its features. It was not just the main Rhino wallet product. Many of you will remember using our community tools over the years, such as nodes, explorers, faucets, Docker images, etc. We are very proud of this and grateful to all community members from the, for the nice words over the years. Ultimately, though, our attempts to monetize the product never bore fruit to a point where the product could sustain itself. And at some point, we have to cut our losses. As a consequence, we decide to discontinue the Rhino product. We will shut down the platform on October 31st, 2024. If you want to withdraw your funds via the Rhino platform, please do so until that date. After that date, you will have to use your recovery document allowing you to access your funds locally. Long live Monero, and big thank you to everyone who supported us. We hope to build more cool things with the Monero team in the future. Uh, that is very sad, very unfortunate. Um, 
we actually I actually use wallet uh, Rhino wallet uh, internally at Cake for a couple things, um, and the platform it is nice. Uh, it's a nice like business oriented Monero wallet platform. Uh, so very sad to see this is shutting down. Um, I, I I honestly wish they would have um, raised their pricing model instead of shutting down because this this is actually kind of a, it's a useful tool and. If you're a business who has a lot of like money flowing through it, then you can afford to to pay for the platform, no problem. Uh, so this is unfortunate, sad to see. Uh, I hope this is able to be picked up at some point, and I hope they will open source the server code. So at the very least, if if somebody wants to, they can self-host their own um, Rhino wallet uh, instance to use for themselves personally. Uh, very unfortunate. Um, thank you, Rhino wallet for making a cool product. I hope it comes back at some point in the future. That would be cool to see. All right, moving on. Sorry, just looking at all the links we have here. All right, next up we have an article from Decrypt. Why Tornado Cash co-founder Roman Storm's free speech defense was rejected in court. A U.S. district judge ruled that the First Amendment didn't warrant tossing charges around sanctioned Ethereum coin mixer Tornado Cash. Code is protected speech? Not so fast. A U.S. district judge ruled last week in the high-profile case around Ethereum coin mixer Tornado Cash. Judge Catherine Polk uh, Phyla rejected developer Roman Storm's motion to dismiss his case in the Southern District of New York last Thursday, over a year after the Tornado Cash co-founder was arrested on money laundering charges. Phyla ruled that his case could proceed to trial. While Phyla's found the Storm had been adequately charged, Storm argued in his motion to dismiss that his charges infringed on his First Amendment rights. He stated it has been well established that computer code, such as coin mixing service, is protected speech. The prosecution represents an unprecedented attempt to criminalize the development of software, Storm argued in his shot down motion, adding that the first the protections of the First Amendment apply to computer code and computer programs constructed from code. While the United States sanctioned Tornado Cash on August 2022, banning the tool for masking Ethereum transactions and thus making them more difficult to track, the decision was decried by privacy advocates like Edward Snowden. The whistleblower warned the move was deeply illiberal and profoundly authoritarian. The government has underscored Tornado Cash's use by state-sponsored hackers as a threat, while crypto advocates have rallied around Storm's costs. However, Fiala's ruling for industry-wide concerns boiled down to the statutes under which Storm was charged. These laws do not protect, uh, do not target protected expressive conduct, Fiala said. Uh, of the laws Storm allegedly violated in launching a material genetic cash, they punish money laundering, the operation of unlicensed money transmitting mission, and sanctions evasion. Uh, so that that kind of uh, flies in the face of what Tornado Cash actually is, and clearly they don't understand like how how this works, um, and the fact that anyone can use Tornado Cash, and uh, they don't they don't need him, they don't need this guy to run this service for them. Uh, pretty pretty insane uh hopefully as this case goes on it'll be more and more uh it'll point more to the fact that it really is just a guy who is developing um a software that anyone can use um and it is just code uh so hopefully as this case continues uh because unfortunately it was not dismissed it is continuing uh the first amendment will uh, protect it, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, they're they're going to push on it as hard as they can. Of course, even even if they know it's a violation of the First Amendment, the prosecution will definitely push on this. Uh. All right, next up. Damn, I'm having a hard time loading some pages right now, guys. Try again. Let's 
to the stream here. All right. So uh, next up, we have uh, Monero. From this is from Doug. Uh, Moneratopia.com meme contest. Help spread the word on the world's greatest digital cash conference and win XMR. Reply to this post with your best Moneratopia.com conference related meme. Like this post and retweet it. For extra points include projects like Cake Wallet, Bitmay, Monero, Xano, Dark Five, Firo, Pirate Chain, Trocador, Wow Nero, Exolix, and Squad Swap. Tag three friends for a chance to win. First prize is getting one whole XMR. Second prize is getting 0.75 XMR. And the third is getting 0.25 XMR. And this contest ends on October 12th at 11 a.m. EST. And winners will be judged slash announced on that Saturday morning's Maritopia live show. So this contact this contest ends next week right before Maritopia show. So Go ahead, and if you want to join this contest, create your meme. And uh, I'm not sure how um, it'll be judged. We might just have a few. I think a, f a couple of us on the stream will, will judge. Um, and I'm sure the more likes one gets, that, that could potentially play into the role of which one is uh, favorite or best picked. Uh, but we got a few here. Uh, we got a few already, which... Uh, you can go onto this post and look at the existing ones and upvote them if you like them. Uh, and we will review and judge all of these in, on next week's show. So get on this if you want to join the contest. All right, next up, we've got a tweet from Lil Elites. This is a pretty badass new bill for financial privacy. It removes SARS and CTR filing requirements, make my, makes financial information only accessible via a search warrant, specifically introduces Fourth Amendment protections, bans the creation of central databases holding personally identifiable information without the establishment of a dedicated law granting a U.S. agency such right, bans the U.S. government from creating CBDCs, and introduces criminal penalties for any U.S. official violating your financial privacy rights. So this is a bill to reform financial privacy uh, that looks like it adds some protections to uh, Americans, well, financial privacy. Uh, and hopefully that's all it is and doesn't have any other uh, crap in it. But I guess the elites was taking a look at the actual bill and found some decent information inside of it that uh, shows some good things. So this would be uh, interesting to follow. And seeing where this goes. Oh, the same. Lola Leitz will be a speaker at Monerotopia, by the way, remotely, but a speaker yes. nonetheless. And yes. she's she is doing some. Uh, they're doing some amazing, uh, amazing work in researching and following uh, from a legal perspective what's going on in the privacy tech area. Following the tornado cash trial very closely, Samurai always has the best takes. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, definitely follow this. Follow this for sure if you want to see what happens with the Saving Privacy Act. Um, and Lola Leeds will probably be reporting on that more. Uh, it's very cool to see. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Moving on. Got a tweet by Peter Van Valkenburg. Another 250 million in illicit transactions facilitated by the financial messaging system SWIFT. They are not under any legal obligation to do KYC AML for these transactions, despite having full control over who can and cannot send messages on their network. And we have a, uh, let's see if I can actually load this page without it blocking me. All right, maybe it actually let, oh, no, okay, all right. Wall Street, Wall Cuck Journal, maybe an archive.org will do me right. Our Wayback Machine. Just so I can look at this briefly. <laughs> Just restart network manager. Yeah, sure.
Yeah, I don't think flushing my DNS is going to change anything. <clears throat> oh, well, I guess this uh, recorded copy of this article is also blocked, hilariously enough. Oh, well, can't really look at this. Point being that uh, there's incredibly more amounts of financial fraud and criminality that happens on controlled and traditional uh, financial systems compared to um, crypto. So I think that's the point being made here. And we got a couple more links here. Tweet from Monero Talk. Hi, Monero fam. Douglas Tuman is heading down to Mexico City to do Monerotopia 24 Recon. Join Doug and some Monero peeps for coffee and snacks Monero meetup. When? Sunday, October 13th at 11 a.m. at the Cardinal Casa de Cafe uh, on this specific address right here. And there's a maps link. Comment here or DM to RSVP. So if you want to meet up with Doug while he's in Mexico City doing some preparation for Monerotopia next month, you can uh, join him here. And I think I have a couple more, which I will find myself. Give me one second, guys. So I'm, I'm getting a couple of these um, these boots on the ground videos of people who are uh, helping from the aftermath of the hurricane. So here's here's one in particular right here. Um, here's a guy that is doing his own SAR, um, and he he has some something to say about uh, his own experience with what he's dealing with. My name is Jonathan Howard. I'm a member of the Florida State Guard Special Missions Unit. And I'm also up here with Aerial Recovery, a nonprofit. I came up here on Sunday with Aerial Recovery before we even got activated. We flew up here and then we got activated, which was great. I have my team up here working as well. Here's the problem. I'm going to tell you everything that's happening from the ground, what I'm actually seeing because what they're telling you is complete bullshit on the news and these politicians don't have a fucking clue and they're lying. And I'll say this now, I'll say it at the end of the video. The only thing I need from this video is helicopters. If I have helicopters, I can save lives. Without helicopters, I can't reach these people. It doesn't matter how many chainsaws and trucks I got, I can't get to them. They're 10 miles in, 20 miles, 40 miles in the mountains. There's no way to get with them or even communicate with them. I am literally flying around in a civilian helicopter looking for SOS messages carved in the mud or painted on the ground and we're dropping down and saving them. What got me fired up about this was yesterday, me and my team did the rescue of that 11 day year old baby. And all these government officials and social media, they're showing that video, that pictures and video of that rescue and claiming that like they have some like government help with that. And I mean, it, even USA, I think it was USA Today wrote an article about it saying it was a Florida National Guard that went and got it, like with a helicopter. No, it was me, my buddy Charlie, and a civilian named Zeb with his own personal helicopter out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Like without that civilian, that baby would be dead. And the old lady we went and rescued after that, she'd be dead too because she had one day left of oxygen. That No one was going to go get them. I will tell you when we go up in the air, I probably see 40 civilian helicopters. I might see two Blackhawks. 
National Guard, military, whatever they are. That's it. No one's out there doing rescues. I have my entire team up here from Florida right now, and they have no ability to go rescue these people other than what they can drive to. And the people that are in dire need, they're out in the mountains. They are completely cut off. Now, I will say, I spoke to my congresswoman down in Florida, and she's a badass, and she made a bunch of phone calls, and now we got two contracted 60s coming up here tomorrow, which is great. I love that, but, like, I still don't understand why we don't have more helicopters. Like, we'll get a lot of work done with that, but there's no uh, – no, there's no military. There's no – no one's doing nothing. I just it, – it blows my mind. And they're not even allowing people to see what's really going on. One of our friends yesterday, they were actually escorting CNN down at Lake Lore. And they wouldn't even let CNN, the sheriff department would not let them go videotape the bad areas, how destructive it is. I don't know why they don't want to show you all that, but, I mean, it is bad. I should also say, when I flew here on Sunday, they actually stopped us from going in, the sheriff department. And it was because of a bunch of politics that they were claiming was a speaker of the House of North Carolina that was preventing us from even going in and trying to kick us out which I have clarified today with North Carolina politicians that reached out to me, good on them. And they were like, that's complete bullshit. Speaker of the house has nothing. He wants you guys there, but this is the kind of political BS that is happening here right now. Like everyone's trying to be in charge without taking any type of action. Nobody wants to coordinate with anybody. Everybody wants to pretend like they're being the hero while these people are literally fucking dying in the mountains. And these people, like I'm saying, these people are limited medication they're running out of oxygen, and there's no one going to get them. The most effective way I have found to go find these people is by getting in a helicopter and flying down the rivers and roads and looking for SOS messages or people waving us down. And then we drop down and get them. We have all these people here. We have law enforcement. We have State Guard, National Guard. They have no way to go get these people. Yesterday when I was at the Asheville Airport refueling, which, by the way, a civilian is paying all this out of his own pocket. He's not even looking for a reimbursement. I think we did four refuelings yesterday. And that was like just in half a day's work. We're in Nashville, and I saw two Air Force helicopter 60s. And I knew there were PJs just looking at them. And I went up to them like, hey, guys, like, what are y'all doing? And like, this is what you need to be doing. This, 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 this is how I'm finding people. And they're like, we can't go. We're waiting on Title 10 orders. And I'm like, what? They just, they can't get any authority. There's military helicopters all over here sitting on the ground, and they can't do nothing. Even my JSOC boys in Fayetteville, they can't get orders to come out here. It is just the most disgusting thing, and they're killing these people. And I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know what kind of conspiracy. I've heard so many things, whatever you want to come up with. But they are literally allowing these people to fucking die in the mountains right now because we can't get helicopters. They got money for everything else in the fucking world right now, but if they could just get us helicopters – we could fly out there and rescue these people. So I hope this video goes viral. I hope these politicians get fired. I hope people get pissed off. They'll probably kick me out of the state of North Carolina for doing this. But you know what? I don't care because if I can save one more life for it, it's fucking worth it to me. Crazy. Really does beg the question why there's not a greater government response when there's literally people that are stranded in their own house with no electricity no food no running water no drinkable water and they're just essentially being left there to die uh, while civilians are the ones having to actually go out and save people and some of them are being threatened for doing so like here's one more instance of a a pilot, a helicopter pilot from South Carolina, who this guy was was actually threatened under arrest. Low cloud coverage is like lure. The cries for help from people stranded without food, water, or electricity hit social media soon after the flooding last Friday. But my parents are stuck there. Their address is <laughs> Banner Elk. They are in the first condo. If you receive this, please give me a call back. Thank you. Sidham's phone started lighting up on Saturday with people begging for help. I, mean, I can hear the desperation in her voice. And this is multiple phone calls I've received like this, voicemails, text messages, and you could hear people desperate for help. Sidham and his son rescued four people on Saturday and spent the night in a nearby pilot's lounge, then decided to fly again Sunday morning. I spoke with my son, which is my co-pilot. Um, I, I said, hey, do you, you want to go back out and, and try to help today? And 
his his response was, "There's so many messages. I I don't think we can't not go help." Sidham and his son were headed up to Black Mountain. Flight tracking shows no flight restrictions in place Saturday or Sunday morning when Sidham flew through the Lake Lure Gap, but that was all about to change. The Sidham spotted an older couple waving for help, then landed in what's left of their driveway. Hey, I want you to uh, let me get in. You step out and go out and help her in. Put her bag in the back. Get her strapped in. I'm gonna take her down. Come back. I'll take him. I'll come back and then I'll get you. Okay. I originally left my son co-pilot on the side of the mountain. It was, it, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim and, and I was just gonna take one person down at the time. And, and you can hear me in the video talking through with the victims and with my son, what we're gonna do. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. Told him my, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, uh, pilot, he immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the, uh, at that time I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. So at, at that point there was, I felt like the conversation wasn't going any further. And again, he asked me to leave and, and, and I said, hey, I have no problem getting out of your area. If that's what you want us to do, we'll, we'll leave, no issue. At that point, I asked him, you know, what was the reason I had to leave them there? And, and he said, again, you're interfering with my operation. I, I just need you to get out of the area. I said, sir, I'm, I, I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not gonna leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're gonna be arrested. I said, well, Sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. I, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. He flew the three minute trip back, picked up his son and left the woman's husband behind. Sure, he was flooded with emotions and, and trying to rescue other people. And I, I just felt that it was best at the time to leave. So I did follow his instructions and I ha had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologized and explained and she, she was standing there. She heard the whole conversation and um, they were both very, very surprised, very upset. The husband, as I was leaving off of the side of the mountain at that point, separated from his wife, he was, he was upset. I can only imagine. Sidham and his nearly 1,400 flight hours turned his chopper around and headed back to South Carolina, passing people waving for help along the way. As I was actually leaving to go back to get my son, the original chief or, or captain that I spoke to, uh, his crew and, and himself, they, they came back over and said, hey, man, we, we can't tell you to go get the victim. We can't even ask you to go get the victim. But we can tell you if you come back with the victim, we'll have you a designated landing spot and, and they, they won't we'll make sure they don't come over here. So there was no flight restriction when you went in? No, no, no. flight restriction when I went in. Uh, it, it went in place 20 or 30 minutes after the confronta confrontation with uh, Mr. Crazy, insane. How dare you go and save people? You're stealing our job, that's our job. You can't save people, only we can. Absolutely insane. I think it's all the news. Got a couple ch uh, super chats here. Uh, Neil is tipped dollar twenty three. Make no mistake, those in power do everything to stay in power. Money is one of the main ways by which you stay in power. To use Monero is to give the money, the power of money, back to the individual. Decentralize and anon anonymize and defeat surveillance. True that. And FD tipped a dollar. Question for Chuck. Does Cake have now or plans to have an enterprise wallet? One that has an API that can interact with podcasting 2.0 apps like Fountain. Um, we definitely didn't have any plans, um, but in the wake of the news of Rhino Wallet um, shutting down, uh, this is definitely something that will come up as consideration of something we could pursue uh, as it is a niche, but I mean, Rhino Wallet did feel like an important niche that people people used it. I mean, I know I used it. Um, I know a couple other people used Rhino right Wallet, a couple other businesses. So it is unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely a conversation that will come up. 
Uh, yeah, and I think that's it for the news.